Hello and uh, welcome to ENGR 206 uh, lab sessions. Uh, this video recording is just to introduce uh, breadboards to you. Uh, breadboards are basically um, um, that helps us to uh, experiment uh, electrical circuits in real life. We can measure uh, voltage across components or current flowing through a component in an electrical circuit uh, on the breadboard. Um, so before we get down to the breadboard, let's uh, take a look at uh, a normal electrical circuit and uh, let's see how that electrical circuit can be designed on a breadboard. So let's say we have the circuit with a power supply of uh, uh, coming from a triple a double a battery uh, of 1.5 volt and let's say that battery supply is connected to a resistor called R1 and a resistor called R2 connected in series with each other and let's say R1 is uh, 2 kilo ohm and R2 is let's say 1 kilo ohm uh, what I usually do is uh, let's start with the power supply and go clockwise direction to identify all the joints uh, in the circuit uh, what do I mean by that is uh, let's say the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the head of R1 which is this joint over here and then uh, you have the tail of R1 connected to the head of R2 which is joint 2 and then the tail of R2 is connected to the negative terminal of the battery so when you when you identify the whole circuit as a uh, number of joints uh, and you want to transform this and use this on the breadboard uh, it is slightly different uh, um, it's not that as straightforward as what we have on paper but uh, what happens is uh, this outer edges of the breadboard this two edges of the breadboard uh, is basically where you have any kind of power supply connected and as you can see the positive terminal goes here and the negative terminal goes here and all the holes are linked to each other in a row so basically what that means is when you have a positive uh, terminal of a battery supply coming into this breadboard with the let's say a connecting wire or something like that and you put this connecting wire in any one of these holes in the row the whole row has now access to the positive power supply of the battery the same applies for negative so when you have this negative terminal coming in to the breadboard through a connecting wire and you connect them in any one of the holes of this row the whole row now has access to the positive uh, negative terminal of the battery the same applies in this case as you can see the rows are connected linked each other and same applies for the positive the mid segment over here is different from this outer edges instead of uh, rows having holes linked to each other the columns are linked to each other not the rows just the column and this divider over here kind of divides the mid segment into two parts and this is really helpful when you are working with a chip or when you are working with uh, components uh, more than one or uh, more than three and you need to uh, uh, put them in separate places of the breadboard uh, this divider comes in handy but we'll take a look at that later uh, so for right now what you need to remember is the outer edges has the positive and the negative terminals of your power supply coming in and they are linked uh, the, all the holes are linked with each other in a row and the mid segment uh, all the holes are connected are linked with each other uh, as a in a column not as a row and uh, we have this divider that divides the breadboard into two separate segments so let's take a look at how it will look like in a real life model so you have a breadboard like this one in a real life model and I showed you a circuit with two resistors and one power supply so let's say you have this battery and this battery uh, you take out a connecting wire from the positive terminal of this battery and you bring it onto the breadboard so based on our design of breadboard we can see the red one the red line marks the positive row so the red one over here has the positive row 
and as you can see there is a divider here as well you will see some breadboard has the divider in the outer edges as well and also uh, in the mid segment as well so let's use this portion of the outer edge and uh, we have this positive power supply of the battery being brought into the mid segment using a connecting wire right and yeah let's take a look from this side as well okay and then as per the design we have our resistor the first resistor connected the head of that resistor connected to the positive power supply so as I said the columns are linked all the holes in one column are linked to each other so we have this common connection here to continue the positive power supply into the resistor through its head and then you have the tail of the resistor over here in this column and this whole column all the holes in this whole column it uh, now has access to the tail of this resistor R1 so let's select uh, the next resistor and let's bring it in here so you have this resistor coming in So you have this second resistor, this second resistor coming in and the head of that second resistor connected to the tail of the first resistor R1 and as you can see to have them connected in the same place we are using that same column where you have the tail of R1 and the head of R2. Now remember from our design we have uh, the tail of R2, the second resistor or the last resistor connected to the negative terminal of your positive of your battery so let's look into the breadboard so you have this blue line this entire blue row which has connection to the negative terminal of the power supply so we will have one connecting wire coming out from this negative terminal and coming into this column over here which has the tail of the last resistor or the second resistor right I hope you guys can see it this is the column I'm talking about and they are connected to uh, each other now so basically the circuit uh, the way it looked like in on paper uh, doesn't usually look the same on a breadboard but it's important to identify those joints and have them exactly the same way on the breadboard uh, just in the case of breadboard we have to keep in mind how each columns have all the holes linked to each other for the mid segment and how the outer edges have the positive supply and the negative supply coming in uh, and uh, all the holes on those outer edges are linked to each other in a row right you can try different other circuits with several resistors uh, some of them connected in parallel to each other and some of them connected as series and have them on the breadboard but as I said follow those joints first identify all the components and their joints and exactly have them as it is on the breadboard uh, following the rules of breadboard connection well uh, for today that is it more or less if you have any questions or feedback um, let me know thank you